Hi! In this video, we'll talk about collecting data. So we know we can visualize data and we can pull useful conclusions from these visualizations, but where exactly does all this data come from? In this video, we'll be talking about how computers can help us collect data and how we can best collect this data so that it can be easily analyzed with computers. So what are some ways that data is collected? One common way is simply surveys. You may send out a survey to a group of users on the internet or a group of users on your website, and you can get a lot of answers and a lot of data from the survey. A lot of physical data, a lot of observations about the physical world are collected using physical sensors, things like thermometers and cameras and microphones. These are collecting physical data and storing it in a digital format. Transactional data from credit cards is an example of data that's collected. Every time you make a purchase with a credit card, the credit card company is storing that data, storing that transaction, the time, the place, the amount. Websites actually store a lot of information about you. Every time you visit a website, chances are the website is storing what browser you're using, what type of computer you're using, where in the world you're logging in from. It'll track the clicks you do on the website. It'll track your just activity and behavior on the website, and that way it can you know, tailor a better experience to you as a website user. Another common way data is collected is by crowdsourcing data. You pose a question out to a large group of internet users, or you look at the activity of a lot of internet users, say a lot of people are tweeting about an earthquake in one particular location, you can collect that data and make a guess that there's an earthquake happening there. So these are all various ways data is collected with the help of computers. Now, once that data is collected, how exactly is it stored? Well, temporarily that data will be stored on just what's called local disk memory. That's just the memory on your physical computer. But eventually that data will be uploaded to a database. So Google and Dropbox and Facebook, all these companies have massive databases that store all of the data about all interactions that website uses. Um, and oftentimes if the data is sensitive, if it contains personal information, that data will be encrypted. That way, should a hacker ever get access to the database and pull out all the contents inside, it'll look like gibberish unless the hacker also has the encryption key, which they won't. So that's how data, that's how data is generally stored. So what exactly is a database? What do I mean by that? Well, if you've ever seen pictures that look like this, this is what a database is. It's just a massive room filled with a ton of computers that all work together to store massive amounts of data. So these companies like Google and Facebook and Amazon have just what are called data centers, massive warehouses filled with computers that are simply storing data. I mean, we have these massive data centers and all this data, accessing it efficiently and easily is actually a huge problem. If you have a million or a trillion elements of data and you want to find a specific one, you need to be able to you know, traverse that list, you need to be able to search that list of data and find it efficiently. And the solution here is using database query languages like SQL, SQL. So languages like SQL use a lot of math to actually set up the database in such a way that you can find things very quickly, even if the size of the database grows large. But oftentimes, a programmer might want to access another company's data. So let's say you're making a video streaming app and you want to access a bunch of YouTube videos, YouTube will actually provide what's called a data API so that you don't have to actually connect to YouTube's database. You can say, hey, YouTube, give me all videos that have the tag cat or all videos that are made after the year 2009. And YouTube will provide an API. It'll provide a function that you can call, maybe .get videos or you know, videos.filter where year equals 2009, things like that. So these are ways we can access data from these large databases. Now let's say you are collecting your own data. How can you make that data as useful as possible when it comes time to analyze it and visualize it? Some data is actually just easier to visualize. Numbers are almost always easier to process than text. So if it comes time to make a survey or to you know, learn something about a bunch of users, it's usually better to ask them for numbers rather than a large stream of text that you then have to try to figure out what it says. Another common practice with data collection is something called data sanitization. And that simply means throwing out data that's not in a good format. So let's say someone enters dollar sign dollar sign for their age and they were supposed to enter a number. Well, you can't really visualize dollar sign dollar sign as a number and you don't know what they meant to say, so you just throw out that whole piece of data completely. It's not gonna fit in your data set, it's gonna mess things up, so you sanitize it, you throw it out. And so these are important considerations to take when collecting your own data. 
So really think about what data you want to collect and what the visualization is going to be when you're collecting it. So imagine you want to get information from your classmates. Would you rather have them all write answers down on a piece of paper or would you rather have all of them enter answers into a spreadsheet? Well, if you go with the spreadsheet route, it'll be immediately available to visualize using the spreadsheet visualization tools. If you had them write it down on a piece of paper, you would have to go through and physically type them into the spreadsheet. So the second option is better. Here's another scenario. Let's say you want to determine the most common eye color in your entire class. One scenario, one option, is you have each classmate give you a picture of their eyes, a physical picture, or you have each classmate fill out a Google survey with predefined answer choices for brown, blue, green, etc. Which would you choose? Well, in this scenario, the second option would be much better. This way, you're making sure that they're only choosing from a predefined set of choices rather than you having to go through and look at a bunch of pictures or having to write a program that looks through a bunch of pictures and tries to guess the eye color. The text is going to be much easier to process. So the moral of the story is that computers can automate data collection. We can use sensors, we can use data APIs, we can, we can use a lot of tools to collect data and make it easier for us to gather it. However, storing and accessing this data can be a big challenge when you get to the point where you have massive, massive data sets. And there is a lot of data collected and stored every second, more than you might realize. Every time you're using a device, every time you're visiting a website, chances are there's a lot of data being collected about you.